What is going on everyone and welcome to the channel. So in this video, we're going to be going over five options trading mistakes and these mistakes ended up costing me thousands of dollars in my early stages of trading. Now I know there's a lot of new people getting into the market right now and that's awesome. I'm all for the newbies jumping in and taking action on their finances, their own money and looking to compound their money. But the thing is here, I don't want people to start jumping in, maybe make some money in the first couple of trades, make some money in a really hot market, and then go ahead and lose that money. I want people to consistently be able to compound their gains and ideally even be able to beat the market consistently year over year. Because the truth is that for the majority of people who jump into the market, you're so much better off buying and investing into an index fund, for example, VOO. If you were to consistently invest money every single month into VOO from a young age, from your 20s, and even if you got started into your 30s, that is a proven way to become a millionaire over time. But for many people, a way to make more money with a smaller starting amount is to trade options. You can see significantly larger percentage gains across many stocks if you're buying calls, buying puts, betting on the stock to go up, betting on the stock to go down, and not to mention there are plenty of other ways to make options more than just betting on the stock to go up or down. So the appeal is there because the initial investment many times is actually a lot smaller than you would need to make the same amount of money on a move in let's say Apple stock or let's say Amazon stock. Now I hope these five options trading mistakes can be really, really helpful in your own trading and especially as we see different markets, different styles of trading will become more and more useful. And so many times in slower markets, sometimes in the summer, a lot of these options trading strategies can really come in handy. And we're gonna be talking about that here on the channel, obviously as time moves on. But first there was one thing I wanted to recommend really, really quick. And it was a video that I was watching over at Let's Talk Money with Joseph Hogue. And he has an awesome five options trading strategies for beginners video. And I think it's a really, really good place to start. Not only does this video give you a really good background into what options are, how they work and how to trade them, but he really goes into depth on a lot of key components and he splits the video up very, very nicely so you can rotate through the timestamps and pick the sections that you need the most help on, what you're most interested in and dive right through in a very efficient manner. So I'm going to recommend a link to Let's Talk Money with Joseph Hoag's video on five option strategies for beginners as the first link in the description. And I would highly recommend you go and check that out if you have any further questions about trading options. And so now into my five options trading mistakes. The first mistake and the first piece that I want to talk about here is position sizing. Now the reason why I want to talk about position sizing first is because this has been absolutely crucial in my trading, not even just in options trading. So when it comes to position sizing, here's how I lay out my position sizing for a normal trade where I'm just trading shares of a stock. Then I'm going to talk about what I do for options. So for a normal trade, and I primarily trade small cap stocks, penny stocks, for those obviously who've been watching my videos, I will take no more than 10% of my total account value, and that is a maximum position size. Now obviously when I go into a position, I never buy all of it at once. I buy it in chunks, usually think of it in fourths. So when I say a starter, I'm talking about a fourth of a max position size. And so as my account grows, that starter grows. Or if I withdraw money from my account, I kind of reset at a lower number. And so I always take that into account. And so it's 10% of my total account that is my max size. And for me, this is just the best way to manage my risk. I know that I'm never going to get absolutely destroyed by one position. And now when it comes to options, I take this a step further. For options, I will go in with no more than 5% of my total account value as a maximum position. And again, think of it the same exact way. Now for an options position, if I'm looking to build that position out, out, maybe I'll use because it's 5% I'll go in with fifths so it's a little bit easier for me to see so I'll go in and I'll enter that position 1% of my account at a time so if my account is sitting at let's say $10,000 I will enter that options position in $100 increments now obviously options contracts could be different pricing but that's just kind of a rough estimate or a rough outline of how I go about things. So that's cool, that's what I do and everyone's gonna have their own risk tolerance, but why is that so, so crucial and so important? It's because when things go wrong and they will go wrong at some point, one point or another, right? It's going to happen. You're not gonna win every single trade. You're not going to be left with your account getting absolutely wiped. And I think a lot of people are gonna be experiencing that right now because it's very, very easy to say, hey, I think that AMC is going to go up. So I'm going to buy, you know, my entire account worth of AMC options. Now, if AMC just sits where it's at, 
you can still lose the entire value of that position. Obviously, it depends on the option contract that you purchase. Because if you're purchasing an out of the money option contract for AMC and the stock price never gets into the money, well, that contract will actually expire worthless come the expiration date. And Joseph's video actually dives a lot deeper into how that works. So if you want a further explanation on that, that would be a great place to go. But what I want people to understand is that at the end of the day, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon because we want to strive for consistency and we want to strive to stay around here. And certain times, right, you may go from a period of, of capitalizing on what's in front of you to a period of preserving your capital. If the market's going down, if we have uncertainty, I don't want to lose a lot of money here. Maybe I can make money on stocks going down or the overall market going down, or let's say VXX or VIX or the fear indexes, and you could trade options on those as well. But as market conditions can change with the blink of an eye, you don't want to be caught with everything out in the open, and you don't want to be caught with more of your account in the market that you can't afford to lose. The second mistake is not understanding the time component to options trading. Now, why is time so important? Because when you buy options contracts, right, you're buying them for set times in the future. So they're going to expire at a set time in the future or a set date. And when I buy a contract, so for example, if today is Monday or today is actually Wednesday when I'm filming this video, if I buy a contract for today that expires this week, so let's say Friday at the end of the day, there's not that much time. And so that contract could be very, very volatile. And now when I'm trading an option, that plays into my position and my strategy. If I'm playing a lottery option, as many people will call saying, hey, I'm expecting or I'm predicting a very, very big move in this stock very, very quickly. And I kind of want a lottery ticket in the game, but I don't want to risk too much money. Well, that's where maybe I'll put in 1% of my total account. I'll buy a lottery option and I'll have that option expire very, very short term. Now, why is that really important? Well, because those option contracts, because they expire so short term, they're gonna be very, very cheap relative to the same strike price option contract if you were to go out one month, two months, or even further. So my mistake was not understanding that and thinking, oh, okay, let me just buy a bunch of these short-term contracts and not giving myself some time. Now, everyone's gonna have a different strategy and every situation is inherently different, but I started buying much shorter-term contracts, expecting a move to happen very, very soon. And many times, the move that I expect actually ends up happening where I can predict the move. And I think technical analysis is a great, great place to start for predicting these types of moves. And I talk about that on my channel a lot. But ultimately the time component, I was just not giving myself enough time on those contracts for that option to get into the money or for that option to increase in value. And so for example, let's say that I predict a move on Apple stock and I think Apple stock is gonna go from let's say $100 to $110. And I think that's gonna happen relatively soon. I may buy that contract for this Friday. Meanwhile, Apple stock doesn't make that move to 110 or 115 until next week. My contract expired and I lost money on my trade. Meanwhile, people who bought next week's contract, Apple makes that move and they ended up making money. So when it comes to buying option contracts for moves in the stocks, if I think a move is going to happen within the next week, I will make sure that I have at least double the time on my side. And why is that important? Well, because I make sure I have double the time for the expiration date of that contract. So if I think this stock is gonna move in the next week, I'll make sure I buy two to three weeks out ahead of time, and that's how far out I'll go. This way, my cost of the option contract isn't super high, but at the same time, I'm providing myself enough cushion, enough time, whereas if things don't work out, I can cut that trade for a loss and still have some value there. And if things do work out, I'll still be able to capitalize on those gains. And if it takes an extra couple days, I'm still okay. The third options trading mistake that has cost me thousands, and this one actually cost me thousands of dollars just recently, I want you guys to take a look at Tilray stock. And the reason why I mentioned Tilray stock is I was actually just talking to someone yesterday about this and it really pains me because I had Tilray stock options that I bought out, I believe for June. And I bought these for June of 2021 and I bought this back in 2020. And I said, okay, you know, I think Tilray is going to go up. I think cannabis stocks are gonna have a big run. I like Tilray after the recent merger news. I like that, I like that news. And I said, okay, Tilray is gonna be my stock of choice that I think is going to potentially double in value over the next year. Well, a couple months later, Tilray has nearly 5X in value. And I had option contracts that I bought months ago that I had sold after an initial spike. And actually they had spiked on merger news. They got a pretty nice run. My contracts doubled in price and I had previously bought them a couple of days ago. So I said, okay, let me take the gains on these contracts and I'll look to re-enter at some point in the future for a bigger move. Now, looking back, obviously hindsight is 2020, but if I had held those contracts that I had for Tilray, 
that would have been the difference of thousands of dollars. And at the time that I made that trade, my trade only costed me a couple hundred dollars. It was about a $300 trade that could have turned into $3,000 plus if I was just patient on those contracts. It comes down to trusting your gut and having a trading plan. Ideally, what I should have done is I should have sold half of those contracts, held the rest, and not worried about them. Now, my situation, what I really wanted to do was just buy them in a longer-term swing trade account so I don't have to see them every single day buy them, hold them, buy between 1% and 5% of my total account size in that account, and let it set and forget. Obviously, because it was a June expiration. So when I'm filming this video now in February, yeah, I could have cashed in big time. And could it continue to keep going? It certainly could. That's that patience aspect that a lot of people will struggle with when they trade options. Now, the fourth options trading mistake was not understanding Delta soon enough. So everyone talks about the Greeks of options and diving through all of the Greeks is a totally different topic for a different video. But when it comes down to it, Delta, I think, has been one of the easiest things for me to understand and help me price in the actual move of options. And so what is Delta? Delta is the ratio that compares the change in price of an asset to the corresponding change in the price of its derivative, for example, an option. So in the example here, if a stock has a Delta of 0.65, that means that the underlying stock, let's say you're trading Apple options, if Apple goes up by $1 per share, the option price will rise by 0.65 or 65 cents per share. Now, why is this so important? Well, it really makes it easy for me to see exactly how the pricing of this option is going to move. And I can say, okay, this makes it easy. I know I'm expecting Apple to move about $5. So I can almost guarantee here that I'm going to get a 0.65 times five move in my option price. And so now I can actually back my way into the strategy, back my way into my position sizing a little bit better and understand where I'm looking to take profits on these option contracts. Because if I'm anticipating a $5 move in Apple, well, I'm going to take that $5 move multiply that by the delta to get a rough estimation of, okay, where am I looking to take profits here on this contract? And that delta is going to change, but it's a really good estimation. It's a really good tool to start estimating because I think a lot of people just think, okay, well, the stock's going to go up. I'm going to make money when my option goes up. Well, where is our price target, right? Where are we expecting to see this contract go? And obviously the same way to the downside. If the stock starts moving against you, against your bet to the upside or downside, if it starts moving the other way, how much will it move or how much will this option contract move in value? And so maybe that gives a way to back into areas to add to your position. What price of the option contract do you want to add to your position at? So I think once I understood the delta, it made it so much easier to back my way into my own trades and my own strategies when it came to trading options. And the fifth and final mistake in my options trading that has cost me thousands over the years has not been selling covered calls. Now you could sell puts, you can sell calls, and you may think, oh, that's weird. Why would I sell it if I don't already have it? Well, you actually could do that. And I want to touch on covered calls here because it's something that I've been doing a lot lately, especially with, for example, FSR. You guys know from a while back, I bought FSR, I made some money on it, and then it went down, then it went up, you know, a crazy amount. And now it's kind of been sitting in that 14 to 16, $17 range for quite some time. So what have I been doing? Well, I own shares of FSR and you need to own over a hundred shares to be able to sell covered calls on a given stock. But what I've been doing is I've been selling premium for options that are out of the money. Well, so for example, this week, I actually have $19 covered calls that I sold. And so FSR, as long as it stays under $19, what's gonna happen here is that I sell those calls I collect the price of those call options and that goes into my account as cash. Now, if FSR stays below 19 and never goes over 19 by the expiration of that option, well then guess what? Nothing happens. I collected my money, I still keep my money, and I move on. Now, if FSR hits that 19, it's almost like a price target in a sense. So if FSR hits 19, I will still capitalize on the gains that I made on those shares from where it's at now up to 19, but I will get taken out and they will sell 100 shares per option that I sell of FSR. Now for some people, it may be kind of a limiting factor because if you're buying stocks that you think are gonna be going up significantly or growth stocks, well, that could limit you in terms of where you're looking to actually take some profits. If you're looking to buy and hold a stock, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but it's a way for a stock, if you don't think it's gonna to move too, too much, it's a way to start putting some extra cash into your account. And I've been doing it every single week and you don't really think it's a big deal until you start seeing 
how much it starts adding up. And then meanwhile, I'm taking that cash and I'm reinvesting that cash into other positions. And so I'm continuing to compound my account. And it's almost like paying yourself a dividend on a stock that doesn't even have a dividend. Now you can do it for dividend stocks as well, but FSR doesn't have a dividend. So it's like paying myself a dividend for holding the stock, even though there's not really a dividend. Now, if you want a more detailed explanation and a better understanding of how covered calls work and what that means, the 21 minute mark in a Joseph's video that I mentioned earlier here, five options trading strategies for beginners. I'll again link that video as the first link in the description, but the 21 minute mark is the timestamp if you want to learn about covered calls. So hopefully this video was super helpful and hopefully it gives you guys some good understanding into some of the mistakes and some of the things that I have learned over my time trading options. I think it's a great tool to have in your tool belt. And if you want to kind of dabble with options and get started, it could be a great strategy to kind of start Start messing around with with some smaller amounts of money so you're not risking too much if you want to kind of get your feet wet into options. I appreciate you guys for taking the time to watch this video. Go check out Joseph's video if you have any more further questions on options. I'll be happy to answer them. And that video really dives into depth into how they work and how you can start identifying some strategies that work for you. We're going to be talking more about options, obviously, as things progress here on the channel. And as market conditions change, I think it's going to be a good strategy into the summer months if things do calm down like last year in a lot of the small cap stocks. It's going to be a great strategy or something at least that I think a lot of people should have in their tool belt. Make sure you are subscribing to the channel, hitting that thumbs up button. I appreciate every single one of you guys. The platform up behind me, the platform that I use here on the channel all the time is Weeble. You can still get two free stocks up to $1,850 in value when you sign up and deposit hundred bucks. I actually just created my IRA now with Weeble. So now I have two accounts with them. So I've been using them, I've been loving it. Uh, and I really enjoy trading with the platform. Super awesome trading from 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Peace.